Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lone Vic and today we'll be talking about the solo mode of Twilight Inscription, the epic scale roll and write game. In this video I will show you how to set up a solo game and what are the differences to playing a solo game of Twilight Inscription in comparison to the multiplayer game. And when I'm talking about the solo game, I will also be talking about the two-player game because the rules from the solo also overlap with some modifications for a two-player game that you will have to know. If you want to check out the full setup and the full set of rules for this game for playing multiplayer, there is another video on my channel with that. And after explaining the rules, I will be also doing a solo playthrough, so if you stick around, you will be able to find out how I did in my solo playthrough here. If you like what I'm doing here on the channel, if you'd like to support the channel and help it grow, you can click the like button under the video. There is also the subscribe and notification bell to be notified about new videos that are coming onto my channel. And you can also leave a trace in the comment sections to say whether you like the game or whether you've already played it solo as well and you have similar feelings and experiences as me. If you have any questions about the rules, the comment section is also the place to ask them. I'm trying to answer all of those questions as best as I can. And right now, let's dive into the box and take a look what are the differences in a solo and two-player setup for a game of Twilight Inscription. Okay guys, so as you can see, I've set up everything a bit tight and a bit differently than the rulebook suggests because I need to fit everything in the viewport of my camera. So let's go through the changes to the setup when we are playing a two or a solo player game. Now, I've got my four sheets of navigation, expansion, industry, and war, and I will be playing a asymmetrical game. So I've got them all on the A side. So this is 6A, 4A, 4A, and 5A. The deck of events is prepared in the same way. I've got the four objectives, one of each type. I've got my speaker card and I've got my race card and I'm using the Hakan Emirates or Emirates of Hakan, which is a classic race from the Twilight Imperium universe. The relics are also here, so no changes when it comes to that. The dice also, and I'll be using the box as a dice tray. Now, the main sheet that we are using in the game, that is in the middle of the table usually, should be flipped onto this solo and two-player side where you've got those rows for the automated player. And the second difference, because this was the first one, the second difference is that you are using all of the agenda cards that are provided in the box. You're not only selecting one of each type, you should put all number two, number three, and number four agendas on the table for the game. And that's the only difference or two differences when it comes to the setup. So now let's talk about the differences when we are playing the game. Okay guys, so a turn for you as a player in Twilight Imperium when you are playing a two or one player game is completely identical. So you're rolling the die, you're using the resources on your sheets and you're drawing an event card and basically that's it. When it comes to the automated player, there are a few differences because when you roll the dice, you use classically the resources from the black dice for you and the results from the colored dice are always represented on these tracks. So if the red die shows a single result, you mark the next space over here. If a double result, next space over here. If the blue die shows a single result, this is the row, the double result is here, and the single green and double green are here. And you advance those tracks throughout the game and at certain intervals things will be happening. So now let's talk about those things happening. After you roll and advance the rows for the automated player and you distribute your resources, the event cards that are of the strategy type don't mean a thing when it comes to the automated player. If you draw a production event card, that also doesn't mean a thing. You just do the production and that's okay. If you draw, however, the voting event card to vote for an agenda card, you take a look at where the blue track is for the 
automated player and whether you are in the second, third or fourth stage of events. And this is the number of votes that the automated player has. And you will be counting your votes against the automated players. But after you decide how many votes you're giving to the agenda voting, you also roll a die for the automated player and based on the result, the automated player can get additional zero, one or two votes. So this is this unpredictability factor. So if on the black die, this result rolls out, then the automated player gets zero additional votes. On this result, the player gets one additional vote and on this result, two additional votes. And this is mentioned over here. And also, when it comes to the politics cards themselves, you draw the first one, you take a look at the green section on this card, and if it has a star over here, then you cover up the bottom and you draw a second card so that to draw a red card which doesn't have a star next to its name. So as you can see, I've got a green one with a star and a red one without a star. And if your votes after the roll are more than the votes of the automated player, you trigger the effect with the star. And if you are equal or lower to, you trigger the effect without the star. And that's true for a one and two player game. But let's say that hypothetically, the first card I drew didn't have a star next to the green event. So I cover up the red one anyways, and then I draw another agenda card so that the red event has a star next to it. So there always has to be one event with a star and one without. And when you win the vote, you trigger the event with the star for you. So no matter if it's red, but the star counts. So this the star marks the winning result. And if you don't have the majority of votes, you always trigger the effect without a star. And then you discard both of the cards and that's it. And you also cross out all the remaining vote numbers in the section that the voting happened in so that the automated player starts collecting the next votes already for the future session. When you draw the war event card, you take a look at how much strength in the current stage the automated player has and obviously cross out the remaining empty fields as for the voting. And this will be the strength with which, with, with which you have to fight. And the fighting happens so that if I am playing a solo mode, I am fighting the automated player on both sides of my military grid over here. And if this is a two-player game, then you at the beginning of the game roll the die in order to determine on which side will be the human player and on which side you will be fighting the automated player. So if the result is this, then the automated player for both players is on the left side. And if this is an any other result, so this one or this one, then the automated player is for the whole game on the right side for both players. And you basically resolve war as per normal. Now, these four tracks are basically to for the automated player to claim the objectives. And this is kind of a race also to the Mechatol Rex. So when you fill in the track up until this asset space, you circle the asset space as well, and you flip one of the cards that is marked here to the other side to kind of symbolize that the automated player has already been first to that and you can't get the maximum points. And I should flip those around because I've put them on the wrong side. Yes, like so. And if the automated player gets to Mechatol Rex first, you write the AI name over here and the AI doesn't get the additional votes, doesn't get the additional points, because at the end of the game, you just calculate your points and you are seeing how well you did on a scale that's in the rulebook against the AI. And those are all the changes that you need for a solo or a two player game. I will also mention that you can increase the level of difficulty for the game once you are familiar with playing solo or playing with two players. And 
Now I'm set up on an easy level, so there are no markings here initially apart from the ones printed on those spaces by default. If you want a medium level, so you should cross out the first space on each of those four tracks over here and also on the military track, so on the red one, you should cross out the first symbol on the second and third stage. And if you want a hard version, you should cross out the first two spaces on each of these four tracks over here and you also cross out the first symbol on the second and third stage of both the red and the blue tracks. And that's it. Now you're ready to play a solo game or a two-player game of Twilight Inscription. And right now, if you want to see how me and the Emirates of Hakan did against the automated player, stick around and watch the rest of the video. If, however, you don't want to see my solo playthrough, but you are interested only in the solo rules, thank you for watching. Have a great day. Remember to hit the like button, ring the notification bell, and click the subscribe if you want to support what I'm doing here. And see you in my next video. And well, bye bye. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the solo playthrough. Okay, guys, so let's start with the Emirates of Hakan. And in preparation for the game, I get two trade goods over here. The first trade good that I'm spending in a round gives me two resources instead of one, which is pretty cool. And let's uncover the first strategy card. And this is going to give me two blue resources. And I am going to automatically go to the navigation and spend one trade good in the very beginning of the game to get two blue and two green or red from the passive ability. So first I will use up the red ones to travel here and travel here. And then I will use up the two blue ones to collect the two planet systems. So this is what I did and this is the active sheet. And I've got an objective for the navigation to gain five planet assets on the navigation sheet. So this is why I did it right now. I've got the objective for the industry sheet to gain three. You know what? Let's reorder them so that they are true to their position in the game right now. Okay, so I've got the industry to collect three goods of each type. So three blues, three reds, and three yellows on this grid. I've got six nodes with assets on the military and I've got four assets from four different planets or space docks, which should be easy to gain. So let's see how I do. Okay, so it's time for the roll of the dice. So let's collect those. And first things first, let's mark the automated player who will be growing in strength, who will get one more vote and who will also go here on this objective track. So those are the three dice. And now I've got two blue resources and one red resource to spend. So I can arrive somewhere with the red resource and I will go in this direction right now with the red resource. And I've got still two blues to spend. So I will spend one blue over here and one blue over here, thus collecting two red goods. And this is my first round. The second strategy card gives me one resource of each and I will be right now going into the industry track for now. I will still have time to do the military so I'm going into the industry right now. I've got my X over here and I have one X to place and I can gain two because of this. I will basically place my X over here and I will gain one yellow for one resource production and I will gain one blue over here. Okay, and now let's see how the dice roll goes. All right, so first let's mark the automated player who is still growing in strength and gets another vote. And also the green objective track is marked. And I've got one red and I've got two greens. 
So that means that I can cross out one space on the grid and mark two. So I will cross out this one. So this is the crossing out and I can gain two. So I will gain one yellow and this will give me another goods production and I will gain one vote. So I will basically finish with this. Let's turn over the next card and the next card has three red symbols. So with the three red symbols, I will go to my military grid. And with the military grid, there is a strength of three currently with my enemy. So I have to start collecting stuff over here. So with the three, I will basically build a first cruiser and I will build it over here giving me two victory points at the end of the game. And let's see how the roll goes. Identically to the previous one, my enemy is gaining one of each single mark and I'm getting two blues and one green. So I will definitely spend the two blues for a PSD and I will place this PSD like so. So right now I've got one, two, three, four against four, which is a draw and I've got one, two, three over here. So I will spend this green over here to create an advantage, I will place one infantry and then I will spend one trade goods to get another two blue resources and I will place the second PSD over here. Remember that I have a goal of having six nodes with assets on this board. So I've got four right now, which is getting me very close to collecting those additional points. This is basically why I did this right now. And we're going into the first card from the second stage. So this means that I can have either war or voting right now or production. So let's see what happens here. Okay, I've got two blues, which allows me to go for the navigation right now with the two blues. So I will circle this and I will circle this. And those two will give me the two red goods over here. And let's roll the dice. Okay, so my enemy right now is growing in strength military-wise. So they've got five and they've got a double green and a double blue symbol. So that's not threatening just yet. And let's see how my navigation goes. I can gain access to three different places right now. So I will basically go here, I will go here, that's two, and I will go for this green asset over here, that's three. Okay, I've got no trade goods left to spend in order to increase those rolls. Let's see what the next card is. And the next card is thankfully production. So I'm producing two goods, which is going to be very useful. And the automated player basically does nothing right now. Okay, let's see the next one. And the next one gives me the three red resources. And I will go with those three red resources. How much do I have in the military right now? Five, and there's one, two, three, four, five. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So my right side is good. I would like to expand on the left side a bit for the military track. Yeah, I will go back to the military track and I will spend those three to create another cruiser over here and I will let this cruiser be built here. One, two and three. Okay, and now let's roll some dice. Oh, and the enemy is growing in strength still and I've got a double blue and a singular green. So he's racing me to Mechatel Rex, which he will probably get. And I've got this and this and this 
to spend over here. So I've got like two reds and one blue. I will spend one trade good to get two blue resources and I will spend this one blue and another blue for the PSD and I will place the PSD like so. over here and that leaves me with one more blue from the resource and two reds and that will give me three infantry and I will place one infantry over here I will place my second infantry over here and I will place my third infantry over here and thus I've got one two three four five six assets so I have the first objective cleared and that gives me additional five victory points on the war track. I think that was a good move in anticipation of the upcoming war. Let's take a look at the next card and this is the council. So now we will have the voting. I've got two additional votes like so and like I showed you in the explanation for the rules, I'm now taking the speaker card, I'm drawing the first card from the agenda deck, and the green side doesn't have a star next to it, so I'm looking for a red card with a star, here it is. Okay, so if I win the vote, each player can cross out on their expansion sheet one symbol of a resource on each of their space docks. And if I lose or draw, the player who has the most votes chooses a technology on the navigation and that technology can't be used until the end of the game. The enemy has two and I have four votes to give and he has a roll of a die. So this is basically a 50-50. I will cross out three votes because right now I'm winning and he will win if he rolls a one or a two. So I need a red result from him. And this is a blue result, so he has three votes as well, and I have three votes, so this is a draw. So right now I need to cross out a technology on the navigation sheet. So I will basically eliminate the gravitational thrust, or whatever it's called, the one that allows me to jump through the wormholes. And this is the end of the vote. So right now I'm crossing out this and the votes for the next round will be counted for the uh, third stage. Okay, let's go to the next one. I've got a green asset over here and I will get this green asset and I will definitely use this green asset over here on my industry track. And the green one allows me to gain one neighboring good and I will grab the blue one over here and this will give me a third production. Let's see what the dice roll gives me. All right, so single results on all the colored dice, so the strength here is growing, he's collecting the third stage of voting and this is getting him closer to Mechatel Rex and I've got a red, blue, and red symbol. So I've got two reds and one blue to cross out. So how many do I have? One, two, one, two, and I don't have any reds. So I will definitely mark a red one over here, and this will give me this, and it would be a good idea to cross out over here, and I will cross out over here. And now I will use a trade good to get additional two blue resources, which will allow me to get my passive ability from the Hakan, which is that I get two, any two spaces on the industry grid, which have one good on them. So I will grab the yellow one over here, and this will get me a point. And I will also grab the blue one over here, which will get me here. So I've got three blues right now, I've got three yellows, and I've got one red. Okay, and the second resource that I've collected from my trade good will go into here to collect the asset of a red 
die. And now let's take a look at the next card, and the next card is war, as you can see. So my enemy has a strength of seven, and I've got a line over here, and my strength is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I win on this side, and this is a planetary asset, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I win here and I trigger my passive ability again. So I get two any goods. And well, what do you expect me to do right now? I will grab one red over here and I will grab me a second red over here. And this will get me one, two, three reds, one, two, three yellows and one, two, three blues. And that's five victory points for this objective. So that was a pretty easy war and I'm on a good position on the left side in the beginning of the next stage. Two blue resources is the next step for me and I think I will go to the navigation sheet right now and I will spend the blue over here and the blue over here. So I will get a plus to the battles on the left side from right now on, and I will roll the dice. Okay, so I've got one blue result, so a lot of votes coming up for him, and I've got a double red and a double green. And my results for the navigation sheet are two reds and one green, so I can get accesses to places. So three accesses. So I've got one access over here, a second access over here, and a third access over here. And I will have one, two, three, four planetary resources already in access if I am able to grab them. Let's take a look at the next card. Oh, and the next card is war. So that's pretty bad because I'm losing a war over here because I have nothing over here and he's got two. So I will get minus one point on this war, but I'm winning a war over here definitely because I've got one, two, three, four, five, and I will get a red asset. And this is being crossed out. Okay, I didn't expect that. I didn't expect a war to appear as the first card, basically. And well, that kind of took me by surprise. So we've got a green resource right now. Let's take a look at what I can do with a green resource. I will definitely go here right now and start activating the planets. So I will use up the green resource and I will use up the die asset over here to increase the number of dice on this sheet and I will grab the green resource. I will use up one planetary asset to unlock Rigel 2 right now and the green resource will go over here. And let's roll some dice. And I've got a double blue, I've got a double red and a singular green. So the singular green means that the AI has collected the Mechatol Rex first. I wasn't even close to it, so I'm not that worried. And right now I have two red and one green asset to add here. And I also have the red die, so I've got two additional reds. So this is what I have to spend, or I can spend over here. So let's see, I will grab a green one over here. So this is this die. I will take the two red ones here, and I have still one more red one, which will give me this asset. And I have one more red one, which I will mark over here. All right, so this is the first asset on a planet that I can unlock for the expansion gold. Let's uncover another card. And the next card is production, which I have three off. So it's one, two, and three. And then we've got three red symbols. I will use those three red symbols right now on my military sheet because I really, really need that. And I'm building up over here. So this is the last cruiser that I can build easily 
right now. So I will build the cruiser over here, one, two, and three, to collect the victory point. And I will use this blue asset over here to create my last cruiser right now. And I will build it over here, one, two, and three. So my enemy has a strength of two right now. I've got a strength of one, two, three, one, two, three on each one. Let's roll the dice. Okay, so I've got one, one, one. So this is going to go here. This is going to go here. Four votes. That's going to be close. And one green. So he's getting close to the military, but I've already gotten the military objective. So that's not going to bother me too much. And my resources are this. So blue and two reds. So I will go just for free infantry right now. And I will get one infantry over here. I will get one infantry over here. And I will get one infantry over here. And I will use up one trade good to get two additional infantry. And I will place one infantry over here. And I will grab one infantry over here. Okay. Let's uncover the next card, and this is the council. So I still have only two votes. So I've got three votes only right now, and he already has four. So I've already lost. So let's see what I have lost. So the first green one is with a star. So I'm looking for the red one without a star. And this is it. And I can already tell that I've lost, so I won't be even voting for this. Each player crosses out on the expansion sheet for human assets that were not collected. Okay, so I'm losing four human assets on this sheet. So I will cross out one, two, three, and four, making those planets a bit obsolete right now. But I have three votes for the future already booked. And over here, I'm crossing out this one because it won't happen. Let's take a look at what happens next. I've got three red resources yet again, and I will go to my navigation sheet and I will spend those three red resources, one, two, and three, getting closer to the last planet that I need. And now let's roll the dice. And my enemy has a double red, double blue, and single green result. So the single green result gets the military objective, but I was first over there. A double blue and a double red. Okay. And I'm getting one, two, and three. One of each of the symbols. So I will basically gain access over here. I will also gain access to this. And I can spend one blue in order to collect something. So I will collect this planet. I will cross out a trade good to get two other blues. And the next blue will collect me this planet. And the next blue will collect me this planet. So I've got one, two, three, four, five planetary assets done. So that's five points for this objective over here. Okay, so the next round starts and the next round starts with voting, as you can see. So he's got three votes. I've got four and five. Let this be a good vote for me. So I've got the star on the green and I have to have no star on the red. So if I win, each player may cross out any number of available not collected locations on their navigation sheet in order to gain the same number. So I can basically cross out a few that I have access to, but I have not yet marked to get any others. To be honest, that's pretty okay as far as the voting goes. And I don't have anything else to spend the votes on, so I will spend one, two, three, four, five votes on this. And he's got three votes right now, so if I get the green, I draw, but if I don't get the green, oh well, I win. So let's take a look. And this is a red, so I win. So I can cross out any locations that I have access to in order to collect any other places that I have access to. So I'm losing some to gain some. 
So let me cross out a few. So I will cross out one, I will cross out two, I will cross out three. And I have access to three right now. So I will collect one, I will collect two, and I will collect three. So let's now do the passive ability. So I'm getting two spaces on this sheet. So I will grab one red one. And I will grab, I don't care about the votes anymore right now, and I will grab one yellow one. And now I get a relic. So the relic gives me five victory points, and it's an instant. So I can cross out one asset on each planet on the expansion to unlock two, any two technologies. Okay, one asset. So I'm crossing out the vote here. I'm crossing out the blue here. I'm crossing out the vote here. I will cross out red here and I will cross out the vote here. So that's five. And I can unlock any two technologies. So right now I will definitely want to invest in war a bit. So I will unlock myself the transmission diodes. And I will also want to unlock the neuron motivator. So that was the council vote. That was my accidentally gotten relic from that. And let's continue. So I've got one green resource right now. And I will activate this. So I will activate expansion and I will mark the green one over here. Okay. And I will also use up one planet to grab myself the blue die expansion. I will cross out the another planet to grab myself the red die expansion. I will cross out one more planet to grab myself the green die expansion. And I've got one more planet to use up or even two because I've got one here. So I will cross out this planet and this planet and I will unlock Rigel 3, and I will unlock Rigel 1, just to get some stuff. I will automatically use up the green and the blue die over here, and I will leave the red die for my war card in the next move. So let's roll the dice, whoops, and let's see. Because I need, for this goal, I need four assets on four different planets. So I've got one, two, three, I already have four. Okay, so that's, that's already done. So I've got five points on the expansion over here. So I got all the objectives faster than my enemy, which is cool, that will help. And I've got a green symbol, so the green now track is over, so the green turns into a double green. I've got a double red and I've got a blue. So this is a vote that doesn't count because we already had the voting right now. So the blue votes don't go anywhere right now. Okay, so I don't have to worry about those tracks anymore. I got all the points from here. So right now I just have to fight and this will be it. Okay, so I'm getting this sheet and I'm getting all the dice. So let's start spending. So I will take the two red ones and I will mark them here to get me a blue asset and this will give me some production. That's going to be good. I will take the two blues and I will mark them here and I will take one green and one red and I will mark them over here. So that will give me some population and I will take this one red one and I will mark it over here and now I will cross out a trade good to get two more blues and those blues will get me this and this. So I will get one more population and I will get a green asset. So that's how we roll. And then the next card is production. And I've got right now one, two, three, four, five production. One, two, three, four, five production. So I have some trade goods to spend. And the next card is two blues. And I am going to my military track right now because this is still the fourth round and we didn't have the war. So he's got 
four strength. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm pretty okay. I could go north to the last level. So I will go to the military track. I will unlock my war sons with this green asset over here, and I will unlock the red dreadnoughts with this asset i will cross out the two blues to start building my first war sun so those two blues and i'm rolling the dice right now and i will use up this asset over here to mark the red die okay rolling 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 so that's a double red a blue and a green the blue does nothing right now, the double red goes here, so he doesn't increase in military strength, which is great, and the green turns into a double green over here. All right, and I've got one, two, three, and this is me. Okay, day. let's go. So I will grab two reds over here. I will grab another red over here. And I will grab a red and a blue over here. I will spend one trade good right now. And this will give me two greens. So I will build myself a war sun. I think I'm going to go like here, 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 and grab this one victory point. So this is going to be my war sun over here. And then I'm going to spend one more trade goods to grant me one more green one and this green one will give me a dreadnought and i will place this dreadnought like this one two three four and five which will give me one population okay i guess i did pretty well on the military track right now so let's uncover the next card and the next card is war Four strength over here. I'm basically pulverizing the guy right now. So I'm getting a yellow asset and a red dye asset over here. And the last war is coming up. Let's see. So the first one is strategy. And the strategy gives me blues. So I think that right now I will go with the blues. And I will go here. And I will cross out this blue symbol over here. And I will cross out this blue symbol over here, thus triggering this ability again. So I will grab a yellow singular resource here, and I will grab a blue single over here. So this expansion sheet is the active one, so all the dice are up. And my enemy has a double blue a single red and a single green which turns into a double green but the goals are already gotten by me and now let's take a look at what i can do with this roll okay so i will get the double blue over here i will get the two reds over here which will give me a population asset to collect some points. I will get the green one over here and I will take the two blue ones over here and over here. And now I want to spend a trade good to get two more red ones and I will grab me a red one here and here which will give me another population. So I'm done. So let's see. Okay, I've got Imperial Domination, so there will be one more card and then the last war. So now I'm going here. This is the three red symbols. I'm going here. There is no option that I'm not doing this right now. I need the military victory. The guy can have eight potentially. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven right now. I need to distribute those three reds. So I will go one two, three reds right now. And once per activation, I can place two infantry units. So I will place one infantry unit over here. And I will place one infantry unit over here. Okay. And let's roll the dice and let's see. This is the decisive roll, ladies and gentlemen. 
So this is oh, a singular result. Damn it. So a single red one. So he has strength. My enemy has strength of eight. And the blue doesn't count for anything. Okay, so I have to top a strength of eight right now, having this, 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 and the red die. Okay, I will spend one blue here. I will spend two trade goods, one trade goods to get me two greens, and this will give me a war sun. And I am going to place the war sun over here. Okay, and now I've got those left. So I will spend one red over here. And I will spend my last trade goods to build me a second dreadnought. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is a draw. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is a draw. So I will draw it like this. And just for the overkill, I'll put two infantry over here and over here. So I'm done. And this is the last card and this is the war. So this is eight strength and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I win. And on this side, I win also unquestionably. Okay, guys. So it's time to tally up the points and see how well I did. Let's start with the navigation sheet, which will be very easy because I don't have anything but the five points from the relic. So that gives me five and this is 10 points from the navigation sheet. The military one gave me five points for the objective and it gives me also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 30, 33 minus one, that's 32 points, plus five gives me 37. And then we've got the industry sheet, which will give me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine points only, and five and nine is 14. And then I have the expansion, which has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, plus five, that's 17. Okay, so 37 plus 10 is 47, 47 plus 17 is 64, and 64 plus 14 is 78. So I've got 78 points. Let's see how it looks like in the rule book. In the rule book on easy level, 78 points is very close to being a galactic Dominion, which starts from 80 points, and this would be the maximum result. So I was very, very close, two points shy of getting to 80. Okay, guys, so this is how a solo game of Twilight Inscription is played. If you have any questions about the rules, or if you feel that I messed something up or forgot about something, write it in the comments. And thank you for watching. If you've stuck with me for so long, my name is Lone Vic. This was Twilight Inscription. If you want to support what I'm doing here on my channel, like notification and subscribe below the video and see you again on my channel in another video of mine very very soon have a great day ladies and gentlemen and bye bye